Hi there, Marius here with the Resuscitation Coach. On this channel we do all things resuscitation, so please consider subscribing. In today's video we'll be reviewing the Neonatal Resuscitation Program or NRP 8th Edition Quick Equipment Check. We'll be sharing with you some tips and tricks on how to do your check quickly and effectively. So let's jump straight in. Here we go! Like any resuscitation procedure, when checking your equipment for neonatal resuscitation, ensure to follow a systematic approach so that all equipment is checked, available and ready. It's important for the obstetric and newborn healthcare providers to coordinate care by establishing effective communication. Before every birth, we need to review the antepartum and intrapartum risk factors and ask the following four pre-birth questions as to ensure that we assemble the necessary personnel and equipment. So those four pre-birth questions is gestational age, amniotic fluid clear, additional risk factors, and what is our umbilical cord management plan. Again, these questions will guide us with our manpower and equipment requirements. I use the memory aid or acronym HOSED to guide me to do a quick and effective equipment check. First H stands for heat, O for oxygen, S for suction, S for stethoscope, equipment or empty equipment and drugs. So I follow the same approach as what you would follow when managing a patient using the NRP guidelines. So under heat, what do we need? Number one, you need to have a preheated warmer, make sure the device is plugged in. We need to have warm towels and blankets. Make sure the temperature sensor is available and a hat to keep the baby's head nice and snugly. If you are dealing with a preterm baby less than 32 weeks, we also need to consider a polyethylene bag or plastic bag or something like a Neowrap. We also require a thermal mattress. Under oxygen, Make sure that your resuscitator is plugged into the gas supply of your hospital. Make sure the backup oxygen tanks and air tanks are full. We need to set our flow meter at 10 liters per minute. And always remember, when you set your flow rate, don't forget about your blender. Our blender should be set at 21%. If you're dealing with a baby below 35 weeks, then you can consider the blender setting at 21 to 30%. We need to have a self-inflating bag available. Make sure that you test it. Make sure it's plugged in. Check the pop-up valve and make sure the duct valve is opening when you're squeezing the bag. We need a T-piece or a flow inflating bag. Again, with your T-piece, make sure that you set it up appropriately. Check your pulse oximeter. Make sure that you have a cardiac monitor and leads. And again, always remember, the moment that you initiate ventilation, saturation probe on, ECG on. For prolonged resuscitation and prolonged ventilation, don't forget an orogastric tube, size 8 French, and a 20 ml syringe. On the suction, our primary suction device if needed, is a bulb syringe. Keep in mind that we do not need to routinely suction our neonate during resuscitation. Only if there's lots of secretions you would consider. If there's not a lot of secretions, you can just use a clean piece of gauze and just wipe the mouth. For the suction device, make sure that you set it to 80 to 100 millimeters mercury. You also need suction catheters sizes 10 and 12 French. 
we should also consider having a tracheal aspirator available if tracheal suction is indicated. Have your stethoscope ready, make sure it's functioning and then place your stethoscope head under the blanket under the warmer so that it's nice and comfortable for the little baby. For the intratracheal equipment you need your laryngoscope handle, check your batteries, make sure it's functioning and that your batteries is not expired. Blade sizes 1 is for term, 0 is for preterm and double zero is optional for extremely low birth weights. These are straight blades or Miller blades. ET tube sizes available should be 2.5, 3 and 3.5. Now think systematically, as the clinician intubates, most of us will require a stylet, so make sure the stylet is available. Once we've intubated and we remove the stylet, immediately put your CO2 detector on. Remember, yellow for yes and purple for problem. Once you've auscultated and you confirmed the tube placement, you can secure the tube with a commercially manufactured securing device or tape. Other handy tools is your measuring tape and also your ET table from the NRP guidelines. You need a scissor to make your tube smaller and then our backup device will be the laryngeal mask airway or LMA size 1 and don't forget about your 5 mole syringe to be able to inflate the cuff. The drugs required will be your epinephrine, 0.1 milligram per mole or 1 in 10,000. We need to make sure that we have different sizes of syringes, 1 mole, 3, 5, 10, 20, 50 mole syringe. Don't forget your stopcock or an extension set. Now your ET dose is 0.5 to 1 ml per kilogram. So there's no changes in the guidelines between the 7th and the 8th edition. But for the sake of simplicity, we'll be using 1 ml per kilogram. Your IV dose, also it's unchanged. It's 0.1 to 0.3 moles per kilogram. But in the NRP program, for the sake of simplicity, we'll be using 0.2 ml per kilogram. We need to make sure that we have a UVC kit, UVC catheter, sizes 3.5 and 5 French. Normal saline should also be available in either the 100 mL or 250 mL. And our dose for saline is 10 mL per kilogram. If you benefited from this video, please consider liking the video, subscribing, and smash that notification bell so that you are informed when we upload our next video in our NRP series. I hope you have a fantastic day. See you next time.